I saw you, your post about the golden years. Yeah. Good morning, St. Pete. Good morning. I'm Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my great joy and pleasure and honor to be the pastor here at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Joining me in worship leadership this morning is Henry Ott, who has been doing a wonderful job as our liturgist this summer. We'll be sad when he returns to UT in just a few weeks. I also want to, before we begin our worship service this morning, there are a few prayer requests that we want to bring before one another. First is for Sue Goodrich and her family. 
Her sister, Velma Morgan, passed away this past week. We also want to remember Belinda Fanning as her daughter, Heather Moore, passed away unexpectedly over the weekend. And so we want to remember both of them and their families and lift them up in prayer both for our service this morning and also through the days to come. Remembering that the way we deal with grief, the way we feel all that we feel is also done in community and that we love and support them with all of our hearts. I also want to welcome you. Whether this is your first time or you have been coming for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here, and it is a joy to worship with you this morning. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. We have come together as one. One people gathered in the name of one God. We will worship together as one. One community in Christ's we are being empowered as one by one. One body, one spirit, all to the hope of one God. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the Father of all, the Lord of all, the Lord of all. Now, in the name of the three in one, we act as one. One people, I invite you now to join me in, as we proclaim our St. B. mission statement together. Growing the disciples of Christ through the transformation of our opposition. Good morning, St. B. We have uh, several announcements that can be found on the back of the bulletin. I want to remind you all to please sign the attendance pad at the end of the queue and to pick up your August newsletter and the mock text if you haven't already. Uh, are there any other announcements that need to be brought at this time? If not, would you all please rise as you're able and join for our hymn 584, Lord, you give the great commission. <laughs>
scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, marking every effort, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some were the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, blown about by the every wind of doc doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth and love, we must grow up in every way into him, who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament, with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth, building itself up in love. These are the words of God for the people of God. What a good scripture. <laughs> I almost don't want to preach because it just stands for itself so beautifully and in ways only scripture can. Last week I shared with you all a quote from Walter Reed, who was one of my favorite theologians and he was an American theologian, wrote several books and was just profound. He said of prayer, action without prayer is soulless but prayer without action lacks integrity. We've been journeying our way through Ephesians for the last three weeks now. Today marks week four. And up until now, we've been building up to, so what do we do with this? <laughs> we've been talking about praise and thanksgiving and prayer. And now we turn to chapter four of Ephesians. We're pivoting from hearing the things that God has done for us because of God's deep love, extravagant, grace-filled love. And now we're turning to the responsibility of what we do because of that love. We're now looking to the tangible actions to which we are called by Christ. And we have been created by God to do good works. We know that we are not saved through the good works that we do. But these good works are a result of our deep faith in God. And we have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit who empowers us to do those good works. Our text begins with the author imploring, imploring us to live into the call that God has placed on our lives, doing so with humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. As I stand here realizing, recognizing, acknowledging, that I have been called as a pastor. We also remember that this call in Ephesians is not just to leading a church. It's not just to preaching on Sunday mornings. 
It's not just to teaching Bible studies on Wednesday nights. But we recognize that each and every one of us has been called to something, has been called by God and equipped with the Holy Spirit. And together, there is unity within that call. And this theme of unity is so present in these 16 verses in chapter 4. But it has also been emphasized throughout the entirety of this letter to the Ephesians. And it's been emphasized through this language of peace. We've been unified through Christ who is our peace. Who makes peace between previously irre irreconcilable groups who proclaims peace both near and far. It is through Christ, who is our peace, that we are unified. Not in spite of, but because of our differences. This unity is emphasized in verses 4 through 6 with and there's echoes from 1 Corinthians and Romans and Galatians found throughout this passage. We have been unified. There's a clear emphasis on one. One body. One spirit. One hope. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. One God who is parent of all. And while it's not listed in Ephesians, there is this natural eighth one, which we'd be remiss not to mention on this first Sunday. There is one table to which all are welcome. This holy mystery, the United Methodist document about our understanding of Holy Communion says, Holy Communion expresses our oneness in the body of Christ, anticipates Jesus' invitation to feast at the heavenly banquet, and calls us to strive for the, visibility, for the visible unity of the church. I don't feel the need to berate all of the divisions and the disunity and whatever else we want to think of in our church and the world because we are all overtly aware of them. But instead, it is a lot more fun to focus on the ways in which we are equipped and called to respond to God's love. In my undergrad, I studied to become an athletic trainer and was technically a certified athletic trainer there for a little while. I was horrible at anatomy, had to take multiple anatomy classes twice, was not good at it. So my classes also consisted of biomechanics and injury prevention and identification. We needed a deep understanding of how the body works together and how potential injuries could occur when the body was not functioning properly. When an ankle is sprained, the knees and the hips take on more stress, which then can cause lower back problems. And so if somebody's having lower back problems, you have to go all the way down the chain. It also puts more stress on the opposing leg to compensate for the injured ankle. But the body is also working behind the scenes to heal the injury. Different cells and tissues and organs are working together to return the injured part back to wholeness. When any member of the body of Christ is struggling, we all feel the effects. And we know that we are called to both respond with prayer and action. And as we respond to a call to action, it looks differently for each of us because of our individual calls and gifts from God 
that are as unique as each and every one of us are. And there is deep beauty in this individuality because together we are one body, united through Christ. Our one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. When we see one of our siblings in Christ struggling, it's easy to jump to harsh words of judgment. And at times, the truth can be harsh and uneasy to hear. Lucky for us, we have the important reminder in Ephesians to speak truth in love. That comes from maturity in our personal relationship with Christ. Maturity is a really interesting concept to me. I think about telling children how mature they are for their age after bearing the weight of growing up faster than they should have. I think about telling adults who enjoy building Legos and playing video games that those activities are too mature for them. I think about how maturity is defined by our ability to conform to the standards of, quote, adulthood. Because if anyone here can really tell me what it means to be an adult, I would love to hear it. But none of these things actually define maturity. Instead, our maturity comes when we are confident in our identity in Christ and in our call from God. And our identity in God is belonging, unified. And we demonstrate our maturity through speaking truth and love, which is much harder than just speaking truth. William Sloan Coffin was an American clergyman and longtime peace activist. He shares the following story. I remember several years ago, a freshman asked me if he could give me some advice. Go ahead, I said. He said, well, sir, when you say something that is both true and painful, say it softly. Say it, in other words, to heal and not to hurt. Say it in love. I know that I have been on the receiving end of a harsh truth. It's not fun. It's not comfortable. Tears were possibly shed. But there is always a clear difference when truth is spoken out of love versus when it is spoken with mal intent. I also want to be clear that hearing hard truths doesn't mean we're bad which is why it's so, so crucial that we share those truths with an abundance of love and grace after significant prayer. Part of this understanding of maturity is that we are speaking out of love because we know that deep harm can be committed under the guise of love. And this ability comes from our rootedness, our oneness, Christ. Because truth and love are not opposing forces. Love does not only produce warm feelings and smiles. Truth and love are intertangled with one another. The key is to speak truth and love so that we might grow in love, so that we might continue to speak truth and love, and continue to grow in love and over and over and over and over again. In just a few minutes, we're going to participate in Holy Communion. We will undoubtedly experience the fullness of God's grace and love for us. Together, we will confess the times we have fallen short of the kingdom of God. We will recount the great works of God through creation, covenant, and the life of Christ Jesus, word made flesh. And we will recount
out the works of Christ through his life, death, and resurrection. We will join in the communion of saints who have gone before us. The Holy Spirit will be poured out upon us, strengthening us to give ourselves for others in the name of Christ Jesus. We will be reminded that because there is one group, we who are many are one. Both our prayers and our actions should begin and end with love. There is one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one table, one God who is parent to all. Amen. table. This is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome. All are invited. And there is room for everyone. After we have blessed the elements, ushers will direct you forward to come and kneel at the altar to receive the bread and cup. Any offering left on the altar goes to our Helping Hands Fund, fund which helps to assist our neighbors and community in need.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Be with the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal Word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people, Israel, and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering, death, and, res and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance. And so, 
in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine, so that we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many partake in the sharing of the body of Christ. <laughs> the cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting with communion to come forward. table is set and you are invited.
Pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have revealed yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is the sun. Hymn number 2130. You're invited to stand this morning.